Zerko's Report, Episode 53, Proof That Hyperbanking Works. Okay, so in previous videos, I have talked about hyperbanking versus hyperfarming and the benefits and how hyperbanking is better. And here is some proof that it works. Our clan sends in resources. As you see up at the top in my hand on the resource management or the uh, resource bar, I have 2.3 billion units of lumber. And everything else, all the other resources are currently being produced because I manage the lumber. It's interesting because the other resources actually have much more than I do. Some of the resources are well over 5 billion units for that individual resource. This is so successful because we only have about a half dozen people actually investing in this new approach that we've been doing less than a week and we already have billions of resources. Now, people can go and upgrade all the knowledge they want and we have tons of resources coming in so we can handle it. Now, that's a half a dozen people investing. Imagine if the other 65 people of the clan would begin to invest in the same manner as well. We would be in the so many billions of resources. Everybody would upgrade. And I mentioned this before. In our clan, if everybody was to do this, Everybody should increase their current influence number by 1 billion points by the end of school, end of May. That's a billion points by the end of May. We can do it because now we have so many resources and we can level up. But you have to watch episode 50, part 1 and 2, to understand how to upgrade correctly. That's a lot of problem. A lot of people go for big influence point numbers, but it's not benefiting them. So they have higher uh, influence point rating, but they're out of balance. So you have to watch that episode. But anyway, I want to encourage people who go, well, I don't make very much. Okay. So here's some statistics for you. Right now, these are the resources I produce per hour. The food, I'm running a bonus on right now. A couple bonuses, actually. So uh, it's significantly more. If I take all these boosts off, I'm probably somewhere between 500 and a million per hour. But I don't. But what if you made less than 500,000? What if you made 15,000 units of a resource per hour? Your donation still plays a massive role. Every day there are a couple or more um, clanmates who send a mere 2 million units of a particular resource or lumber to me. Now, it's important... But they're only able to send that. Sorry, I got really distracted right there. Look at this. We have a half a dozen people or so sending me resources. And some of them are very small amounts. And look, they still have 2.3 billion units of lumber. That's astronomical. So now think... 65 more people get on the bandwagon and they are all able to only send 2 million per day. Can you imagine? Now, some of them will be able to send more than that, but I mean, the numbers are staggering. Oh, okay. So now you want to know, all right, yeah, but you did something with hyper farming. Let me show you my resource production tiles. Look at that. It's a comprehensive array. I'm not out of balance. I didn't do any hyper farming of all of them into one category. I actually have five lumberyard tiles on there. 
And you might wonder, well, why in the world do you have five lumberyard tiles when you can no longer produce that resource because you're over your production limit? Well, last week got really busy and I almost handed off my management position of lumber to somebody else. In that scenario, I would have needed then to be producing lumber. So it, when I looked at the numbers of having four extra tiles still there, it doesn't make a huge difference. Even with just a half dozen people investing, that's, it's not a big deal. But if I was to wipe these out at level 24 and then have to rebuild them, and then let's say life does get busy, I hand that job title over to somebody else, I now don't pr produce any lumber, so i got to burn all of those new resource production tiles and rebuild the lumber yards. Very expensive, very unnecessary. It is easier just to leave this for any possible change down the road. It's not affecting me or the clan at large. Have comprehensive. Now, regarding the food, I did do a few more f uh, food production tiles because I thought in the beginning of this game, hey, I'm going to need a lot of food production because I want to build a big army because, you know, that's what everybody does. Well, I talked to a fellow clan mate who has millions upon millions of troops in his army, and he doesn't run in the red. I said, how in the world are you pulling this off? You must be spending an enormous amount of gold on food production boosts. And he said, nope. He says, your key is baggy. He says, level up baggy like nobody's business. He says, I haven't been in the red since day one. So it proof that if you get your Oracle knowledge, your economy tab, and Baggy the Big up to snuff, um, you're going to be good. You, you, know, you need a couple good amulets, like the Golden Boar. They're fantastic. They give 300% food bonus. So, I mean, you need, you need some good stuff. But at the same time, he's able to do that. And yet, he does not do hyper-farming. His array of resource production tiles is very similar to what I have here. There's proof that hyper-banking works. So, if you're not already sending resources to the clan... I consider you to strongly do so because now you can ask for the resources you need, for the knowledge, and you can get strong 1 billion points by the end of school before summer vacation starts. Let's get on it, folks. Zerko out.